us this hype. This is the card, this is the track, and depending on who you are, this is a really good or really bad place like parking stopper. <laughs> Slow one there. This guy legit almost died. <laughs> 16 laps of Red Bull Ring. I'm gonna show you guys my qualifying. I don't always show my qualifying. However, this was the first time in a long time that I actually didn't end up qualifying against my will. Coming through the penultimate corner, and I'm gonna drive just barely wide here. I mean, the car kind of slides, but you can see I'm about two inches past that green and white curb, which gives me an off track. I have one more lap to, one more chance to set a lap and coming across the first corner of that next lap, the final lap, half of my car is just over half of that yellow curb, which gives me an off track again. So that disqualifies me from qualifying at all. Uh, I messed up both of my qualifying laps. And taking a look at the grid, we have Joey starting P2, as he always does, just about P2. Uh, he usually starts on the podium. We are P19 as car number five. So we have a tremendous amount of work to do, starting with my launch, which I've actually, look at that, look at that. Okay, I did short shift, but I still get a good launch. There's people all over, I mean, we get one position there from car 20. These guys, something happened to them. We're gonna pick up two positions there. Coming towards the first corner, can't really explain this, but the guy next to me just seemingly drives directly into the wall. This guy is backwards as we come across the first corner. There's somebody else on the right side, pretty far below the pace, so we'll pick up that position as well. And just a recap of everything that just happened. I think we go from P19 to like P12 or something here. We've got those three guys at the start. Uh, car number 21 here. We will take a look in his cockpit and try and explain it. I think I know what happened there. He's in the wall. This guy is backwards as we come across here. And yeah, we I mean, huge gains for us already. We are, we are up indeed into P12. And there's also somebody up ahead who's moving extremely slow. So we're going to go past him up to P11. So starting in P19 up to P11, that's eight positions in one corner. And that has got to be just about as optimal as the race start could have gone for me. Because, I mean... P19 was a absolutely devastating qualifying result. And taking a look at, once again, at lap one, that guy spins his tires, runs 16 into the wall. There was the guy who got the poor launch. We're gonna hop in the cockpit of 21. I think he shifts down too early here, maybe just slightly over braking. Doesn't quite lock up the tires, but does send the car spinning around. Moments before that, car number nine, shipping it up the inside of turn one, just about making it four wide, running eight into 15, who is the biggest loser here. He is facing backwards on the track. And that was basically a breakdown of everything that happened uh, in the beginning. There was also one guy who started from the pits, so I think we got an extra position from him as well. Now, skipping back to the present time, we are behind Tyler and Jamie, who are side by side, heading into corner number four. This could go either direction, so I'm kind of just slowly navigating this. End up throwing away any advantage that I could have had there, staying behind both of the cars, not planning on making a move into quarter six here. However, Jamie is going to break quite early and kind of forced our hand. We sling it up the inside, side by side, as we head into corner number seven, this downhill left-hander. The outside typically has an advantage here, but he breaks slightly early and kind of gives us the space to uh, basically use the entire track for ourselves without risking running him off of the track, which is great. So up into P10 now, another position gained, and we are up nine positions as we come across the penultimate corner of the first lap, facing Tyler Stock as our next opponent here and looking to get a good run across the grid. I typically do not like to make moves into corner number one. However, I was pretty close behind this guy. I feel that corner number one is my best corner, and if I were to just stay behind him, it would really devastate my run. So I move up the inside. Don't usually like to make this move. He stays very wide, though, actually extremely wide, drives completely off of the track. May have even gotten a slowdown for that. Somebody else died behind us. We've seen enough carnage. I'm not going back to it. We're up into P9, so 10 positions up. We have 2.4 seconds to Xavier ahead, who is side by side with car number eight, fighting for P7. And it looks like a slight bit of contact. Xavier is going to find his way through corner number three, moving up ahead, and he's gonna hold the inside, kind of defend against Raphael, who is car number eight in P8. And you can see him remaining on the inside there. Raphael pulling to the outside, possibly looking for a switchback, but could also look to go around the outside. Judging by where he's at, I'm going to say it's the switchback. Not quite going to make it work. 
great mind from Xavier there to uh, maintain speed and defend the inside at the same time. And Xavier is a is a quick driver, so when I saw that he was kind of in the back with me, I was hoping that I could follow him through as I figured he would probably be fighting his way through the pack as well. Lap number four comes around. Xavier is now two seconds ahead of us. My eyes are actually on P6, who is three seconds ahead of us at the moment. However, we are going to have to go through Raphael regardless to get to those guys, and he's going to go deep into turn, what is that, turn number three, or turn, turn four, excuse me, that's, it's called Raunch. Rouch? Roach? Ruck? Rauk? I'll put it on screen, and you can decide for yourself how you want to say that. We're pretty close to Raphael now, definitely in the slipstream, half a second behind him, and as long as we stay within this range, I think that our run through T1, which I mentioned earlier, I think we have a really solid run through T1. It's basically the only corner I think I am fully up to pace on this track. I think I could optimize every other corner, but if I could get a decent run there, possibly look at a move into turn three. I don't want to make the move into turn one here. We did it earlier, but that was kind of an exception. I, I think I was just kind of impatient back then, to be honest. And I actually do like falling slightly further back off of people here to allow myself to get a good run. Lap number five, and the situation is going to change a little bit as Xavier slides going out of T1. I see that puff of smoke, and I see him falling down on the relative. And sadly, this kind of foils my plan, because instead of me going around Raphael into turn three now, there's going to be Raphael side by side with Xavier. So I can't make the dive. Instead, I'm going to have to try and navigate this correctly was looking to follow Xavier through the inside and realistically what I think I should have done is break slightly early really hunt for a good exit and I probably could have gotten myself alongside making it a three wide situation into turn four that's not going to happen though and Raphael and Xavier are fighting once again Raphael up the inside at the last second Xavier executing an absolutely stunning switch back there and he is going to make it work flawlessly that also is going to hurt Raphael's exit which gives us a better run heading into corner number six here not quite going to go for it I was really thinking about sending it but I figured he was going to end up turning in and I, did, I didn't really have the overlap there so I was truly at the mercy of Raphael and I just didn't want to risk it we've fought up this many positions might as well take it slow and uh, just take what we get at this point not force anything all that much Xavier is going to be back on the horse he's eight tenths ahead of us we are two tenths behind Raphael and I want to follow Xavier as closely as I can because I think that we have pretty similar paces bad run from Raphael through the penultimate corner it's going to slow us down a bit and we get a super solid run compared to him through the final corner gonna end up having to force a move into T1 again. I guess I didn't have to do this, but crossing onto lap number six and we find ourselves completely alongside. I'm going to send it anyway. He actually breaks early, allows us to open up our exit a little bit more and get a solid run through there. So losing a pretty minimal amount of time in uh, terms of how much time you possibly can lose going through turn one too wide. So we find ourselves now in P8, uh, enough space behind us that we're not going to be under any threat. And it won't be until lap number nine that we actually find ourselves close enough to Xavier to really be in a position to move forward here. And honestly, I don't know that I truly wanted to get ahead of Xavier at this point because I know Xavier likes to fight and I would rather just kind of sit behind him. I do trust his pace. We're catching P6. No point in fighting with him and losing time to P6 when we could both possibly move up, and then I could fight with him later on in the race for P5. So breaking a little bit early there, and I, I want him to know that I do not want to fight, at least not yet. We're pretty close to Q, or I, I think that's how you say his name, K-H-O-O. -O. Heading into corner number four, and I mean two tenths back from Xavier. I break a little bit late here, and... Ah, yep. I'm sorry, Xavier. Sorry about that. Right into the back of him, giving him a little dent in the back and giving myself a little dent in the front. Definitely not optimal. It's not terrible. Nobody really... I mean, all we got from that was uh, two, four times, but I don't think we had any damage that's going to affect our lap times. Possibly could affect a little bit of the balance of the car, but it has to be truly minimal. I mean, it's just a little tiny dent. I'm hoping it's truly minimal, as otherwise I would feel really bad. That was a totally... Uh, needless thing to happen there was no reason for me to go into the back of him there and I stay back allow him to catch up to Q by the time lap number 11 comes around so we have six laps including this one he has a great run through turn one he's got the slipstream heading out of there and he moves to the inside of Q towards corner number three I figure Xavier is probably going to get the run here but I want to try and take as close to the racing line as I possibly can to get a better run than either of these guys a two for one would be pretty fantastic at this point and instead it's going to turn into a zero for one so no no positions gained there Ku remains ahead of us he knows he has the space he's clear and uh we're right on his tail so why not send it into corner number four try and follow Xavier through once again 
just not quite breaking as hard as I need to through there. Totally my fault. It's a really stupid mistake to make, especially twice in the same race. And fortunately, nobody else was hurt there. I do run into the back of Xavier. It looks like his car may have fixed itself. And they both get to get away pretty much unscathed. Incident points, sure, but once again, no true damage and uh, really no time loss for either of them either. A lot of time lost for me, about two seconds to Q, who's now in P7, and it looks like Xavier is going to have a pretty big buffer zone between myself and him. Honestly, after running into him twice, I'm not too worried about trying to catch up and put a battle on him unless he were to make a significant mistake that brought him back to me. Lap number 13, and still kind of making our way towards Q. He's about to make it easier for us as he slides through turn one. I get a decent exit here, and that's going to create a pretty substantial speed difference, plus the slipstream. I'm going to be pulling uh, quite a bit of time to him. Three tenths, halfway down the straight, heading towards corner number three. Not close enough for a dive here. I mean, for some people, they will make that dive. I'm not going to, not in this situation. I think at this point, I'm also 13 incident points in, and 17 is a drive through. If you don't know, you get four for a, you get four incident points for a uh, for a contact. So that would give me a drive through, which I do not want to happen. Gonna have to be slightly cautious here, following Q around the penultimate or the final corner now, right up onto his tail. A possibility to send it once again up the inside of turn one. In my head, I'm thinking that would put me a little bit too far back as there's only three laps left uh, in order to catch Xavier. So I decide rather I will just back off slightly, try and make a move into turn three. And um, sadly, I back off a little bit too much, a little bit too early, I think there. The speed difference isn't quite what I need it to be. So going into turn three, we're still two tenths off, not gonna make that dive. However, Q going to go a bit wide through turn three, which is going to put us onto his tail. Once again, heading into turn four, great opportunity to make a move inside, outside. You pick and choose what you want. You can make it work either way. It's really just as long as you can maintain that grip. We're gonna move to the inside in this case as he remains on the outside. And we're going to go too wide through the corner, dart to the outside, a little bit of contact, actually a zero times there. Thank God, because if that were a four times, I would have a drive through and uh, you can be the judge of that contact. I think that it was a fair move for myself. I think that Q was looking for a switch back or at least to hold me extremely tight, but I was basically already ahead. So yeah, we get that position done. P7 now with what, 14, 15, we have two and a half laps to go or two laps and like a quarter to go. We are three seconds behind Xavier though, and as I said, he's pretty similar pace to us. I don't think we're gonna be able to catch him. Final lap comes around, and sure enough, we didn't really close that gap up at all. He actually pulled away by a couple of tenths, and we really didn't pull away from Q behind us either. He is still half a second behind us as we head through the final corner. It's not gonna be close enough for him to really put us under threat of losing a position. So we will end up crossing the line here, doing a little bit of a swervy celebration in P7. Not something I should really be celebrating, but considering where I started, I'm not upset at myself for that. It was a relatively clean race. And I want to actually hop back to the beginning and take a quick look at Joey's race. So he started in P2 and this race had a fantastic battle for the lead. So Joey straight up into the lead with a fantastic launch. William Sapstead behind him follows him through. So P2 and P3 now find themselves in P1 and 2. The pole sitter now finds himself in P3. William just about immediately going to look for an attack, showing himself on the mirrors into turn three on lap one. Joey is going to go deep, whether that is from the pressure of William or not, I am not sure, but either way, he is now side by side as they barrel towards corner number four car number one trying to navigate this correctly watching them go too wide and he's going to end up kind of sitting in the middle so he could follow either car through ends up following William as William gets a good run on the inside moves ahead of Joey and now Joey finds himself side by side with the pole sitter William defending the inside of corner number six which is going to allow the pole sitter to get a better run around the outside as Joey was kind of I mean his speed was dictated by William there and he will eventually move down through corner number seven into p3 so one one position down from where he started now, but still a very close battle. You can see with the fighting, they've already opened up a gap to P4, and lap number two comes around into turn three. Williams semi-defending, but car number one is going to look for an extremely offensive line. Up the inside, cuts ahead of William on the exit, and Joey swoops underneath both of them, 
However, having to take that tight line and that angle is, uh, it's gonna hurt your run. So he's not able to really make up a position there. Instead, he's going to watch them go side by side into corner number four, slight contact. William looking to go around the outside, doesn't quite make it work. One manages to pull back ahead, heading into turn number six, and he is back into the lead of the race. He's going to defend. William possibly looking around the outside, decides instead to look for a better exit. However, he's gonna make contact, slow both of them down. Joey slides up the inside, heading into corner number seven. The outside does typically have the advantage here, but Joey is going to basically use all of the exits and uh, William goes a bit deep there as well so Joey is actually allowed all of that exit and he moves back up into P2 so they now find themselves back into the starting positions of this race however on the end of lap 2 he's going to cut the exit of the final corner by about I don't know 6 or 7 inches and that actually gives you a 1 second slowdown so he has to pull over to the side let everybody through up until P number 5 so he maintains P4 and he would actually maintain that position for the rest of the race Looking at the results, we did cross the line in P7. Like I said, I'm okay with it. It happens. You can't always, you know, have a fantastic race or fantastic qualifying for that matter. P4 for Joey, great result. This was a tough lobby, especially towards the front. And I rating was good. Safety rating is terrible. We are about to get demoted. And the way we drove that race, honestly, I wouldn't be upset if we did. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to support me, please check out my channel and some of my other stuff. And I am willing to bet you'll enjoy those as well.